you're going to get a call one of these days, and the person will say, so-and-so died in a car wreck, a drug overdose, or a suicide, or even maybe of old age. And it'll be a friend of yours, a friend of yours who was not saved. And right after you get that call, you will hit the floor, weeping with the reality that that person that you knew, that person that you studied with, yet you never cracked your Bible, you never told them about Christ, that person is in an eternal torment in hell. And you can't even begin to comprehend or imagine it. The unending, the everlasting torment in hell. And it's in the presence of the Lamb. It's so scary because the wrath of God abides there forever. No one can imagine that. If anyone worships the beast in its image and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he also will drink the wine of God's wrath, poured full strength in the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, these worshippers of the beast and its image, and whoever receives the mark of its name. Yet the night before all this happened, you sat at Starbucks with your friend, and you assumed it was the loving thing to do, to not talk to them about Christ. You didn't want them to get upset. You didn't want a debate to happen. You didn't want them to be convicted. Do you believe that that was the loving thing to do now? Was it the loving thing? To hide in the fear of rejection? To protect your reputation? That's not loving. That's loving yourself. It's not loving your friend. It's loving yourself. It's loving yourself more than the truth of what Christ did. To tell someone about it no matter what they say to you. After all of this happens, you'll be left highly motivated. You will have this incredible urgency to tell others of Christ. There will be a burden. There will be this burning burden and this yoke. Why? Because you got woken up. That realization, that reality, which you tried to hide from for so long, was presented to you again by God. And you were so convicted. You were so overwhelmed with the truth. This video is to wake you up. 2,000 years ago, Christ gave his life and became sin for those who repent and turn to him. I guarantee you, if you were to walk out of your house, your church, wherever you're watching this video, and you were to walk outside and you saw a cross hanging out there with your Savior, with Lord Jesus Christ on that cross, that would motivate you to do things that you never imagined you could. You would be weeping and in tears at the realization of what Christ did. He became sin. Yet it really happened 2,000 years ago. It really happened. For our sake, He made Him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. If you truly believe that what happened on the cross truly happened, if you truly believe it did, then ask yourselves this one question. Why do you not live like it happened? Why not? 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 Don't wait for the day to come when someone you knew that was not saved, that was living in sin, gets killed and then it wakes you up. Don't wait for that day to come to wake you up because it will be too late. So wake up, you who call yourself a Christian. If you truly believe what happened on that cross, you would be so motivated. It would drive your life. It would be the purpose of every conversation. It would be the eternity of someone's soul and them coming to know the grace of God. But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world.
If a friend of yours hopped in front of you and someone was about to shoot you and took a bullet for you, you would be so motivated afterwards. You would tell everyone about what that person did. At their funeral, you would stand up and let everyone know that they took that bullet for you. You would tell people about it because it's amazing that it actually happened. If you truly believe on Judgment Day, that Christ is your substitute, that He will take your place, the righteousness of God will stand there in your place, in your stead. If you truly believe that, you would be gripped with it. You would be so motivated to tell others about it. Because is that amazing? One sin in the Garden of Eden threw the entire world into this dilemma. Yet all we've done our whole lives is sin. God should have sent us all to hell. That's what we all deserve. It's amazing what God did. Do you truly believe it happened? A day will come in your life when someone you know will die and you will sit there and ponder on the idea that you could have talked to them that last time, you could have said to them that last sentence about Christ, yet it never happened. It never happened. And it will burden you. And it will cling on you. And you will feel this unbearable pain. Life is a mere vapor. And we do not know the hour the Lord will come. As it says, it's going to be like a flash of lightning. It's just going to happen like that. Do you truly have that perspective on time? If you do, you can say all day, I understand that, I believe that. If you don't live like it, then you don't believe it. Faith without works is dead. Because it's evidence that the faith is not truly there, that we truly do not believe. Don't account your life of any value. Don't account it precious to yourself. The only thing that matters is the gospel getting out, is Christ being testified to. And it should be your eager expectation, your hope, your drive. And you will not at all be ashamed, but with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored. He'll be magnified and he'll receive the glory he deserves in your life. Death is nothing. Death is a gift. When you die, you go to heaven, you see Christ. Count everything a loss for Christ. Count everything a loss for surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, your Lord. For His sake, suffer the loss of everything. Get broken of yourself and rely on Him. Because when you're weak, when you're down and you can't do it on your own, that's when God can use you. And that's when God gets glory. And when God gets glory, we get our joy to see Christ treasured, to see Christ glorified and not ourselves. It's all about Christ. Through that, it being all about Christ, you will be so motivated to tell others of the truth. Because through that, your everlasting joy will come through seeing God be glorified. It's all about Christ. That's it. Look to Christ and these things will come to two. Because God's grace is in you.